Good afternoon. Thank you guys for being here. My name is Tammy, and I'm part of a team that worked this summer with the West Midlands Combined Authority to understand and reduce inequity in public transport access. So we're all familiar with public transit delays. <laughs> you guys may recall this one. It happened earlier this month. I personally missed a lecture because of these power cuts. Maybe you missed an important meeting or getting home in time for dinner with your family. For most of us, it was an inconvenient disruption in an otherwise normal day. But for other people, the consequences of public transit failure can be much more serious. Say that you're somebody trying to get to the hospital for a medical appointment, or that you need to get to a job interview, but you don't own a car. Then what do you do when the bus breaks down? As you can see, for some people, public transit access is not just a matter of convenience, but of necessity. And for the people I just mentioned, the people who don't have a backup option can't just call an Uber when the bus breaks down to get to the hospital or job interview, these are people who tend to already be disadvantaged, and so public transit access is especially important for them because failures in the system only further marginalize them. So if I were a transport planner, I'd be asking, who are these people? Where do they live? And how does the current public transit system serve them? I'm not a transport planner, but Helen is. Helen is the head of transport policy at our partner, West Midlands Combined Authority. They're the person, sorry, the people we have been working with this summer. They have <coughs> power over the economic development and regeneration of West Midlands County, including public transportation. One of the problems that Helen and other policymakers often face is that the people who need policy change the most usually have the quietest voices. They don't have a seat at the table, and so policymakers can't see or hear their concerns, and existing inequities in the system only continue to be perpetuated. So our goal this summer was to help Helen and her team find the people who are left out of the current system and give them visibility through data. So what's currently stopping them from doing this? One answer is that they lack informative access metrics. Without a clear idea of how people can get to different places, there's no way to see how access varies between different groups and therefore no way to see or fix inequity in the system. And this is where our team comes in. This summary, we use data to help them solve this problem, starting with asking the question, what is an informative metric of access? Informative should mean something that reflects the lived reality of trying to travel from place to place. And so the first dimension of this metric is that it should be destination-based. When I get on a bus, I'm not getting on trying to randomly go anywhere. I'm getting on with a very specific purpose and destination in mind. So informative metrics of access take the form of, can an elderly person get to a hospital? or can an unemployed person get to a job center? The second dimension is that travel has many different costs. So we want to know things like, how far does an elderly person have to walk to the bus stop to get to a hospital? How long does it take a single parent to travel to a childcare center? Or how much does it cost an unemployed person to get to the job center? We calculated these metrics across the West Midlands, and we built a dashboard that lets Helen and her team answer questions just like these. Let me walk you through an example. This is Falls Hill Road. It's a neighborhood in Coventry near where the Fellows are based this summer. It's known to have a high immigrant population, and we've come to know it as our go-to place for authentic Indian food. <laughs> so what can we learn about Falls Hill Road through our dashboard? First, our dashboard displays a heat map of a selected population. So here we've selected people born outside of the UK, and you can see that Falls Hill Road is lit up in bright yellow, which means that it confirms our intuition that there's a high concentration of immigrants living here. Secondly, our dashboard displays a heat map of transit access. Here, we're looking at travel time to the nearest job center as our metric and destination of access. And now Falls Hill Road is in dark blue, which means that for people living in this neighborhood, it takes a really long time to get to the nearest job center by public transit. We make this really visible by adding a third heat map, which visualizes neighborhoods that both have a high population of immigrants as well as poor access to job centers. So now Helen can look at this map and say, maybe Falls Hill Road is a good place to start if we want to add new bus lines or add more express buses. And this is just one of many questions that Helen and her team can ask. Asking how expensive it is to get to different places can lead to fare scheme changes. Asking how access varies for different demographic groups can lead to infrastructure improvements in the neighborhoods where these groups live. And asking what happens to access when we add new bus routes or change policy can provide a benchmark for scenario planning. 
The long-term impacts of our project are that we hope to encourage rigorous evaluation of potential projects. We hope to encourage evidence-based policymaking, both in transport and beyond. And the fact that our tool is open source and uses open data means that this can be easily scaled by other transit authorities. But most importantly, our tool gives those who are left out visibility through data. And this means that no groups are left out when new transit is built, both in the West Midlands and hopefully in many other places to come. My name is Tammy, and this summer I worked with Ejay, James, Renja, Andrea, and Adolfo, and we are really excited to show you our dashboard and answer your questions after this. Thank you.